So why do you think God created all the people in the world that you see and the ones you don't see and the ones you know that are in the world? And even those who are in the world but not of the world. He did it because he doesn't want to be alone. Because at one time he was alone. This is Martin Zender, if anyone cares. And this is the Revelation series. Although to maintain my sanity, I'm going to have to go off the Revelation series for a little bit and talk about God's loneliness uh, apart from us. We have a lot of the attributes of God. And don't look at your body. I'm not talking about the number of arms or the number of legs you have or don't have. I'm talking about basically, mainly now, your need to be social, to be with other people. We were created to be social. So God puts us in families. As you know, um, your mommy and daddy got together and you came out of your mommy and you instinctively looked for your mommy and she grabbed onto you you latched onto her and the rest is history and as you know i enjoy white noise because it reminds me of being in the womb when things were safe and lovely and warm and fun now that i've been cast into this ugly world i need some sort of uh, reminder of how wonderful life was in the womb that's one reason i'm in south florida it feels like a little womb down here it's about the same temperature as a womb but in order to simulate the sound of the womb i engage white noise every night whether it's an artificial white noise or it's a fan which is i think natural white noise and so we look for that company early on and if a baby isn't touched when he or she is born then he or she soon wrinkles up and dies it takes some people 90 years to wrinkle up and die some people do it early but um god prepared the entire script of the universe when he was still by himself and all lonesome and was he depressed uh, yes in a way he was depressed any word i use to describe a mood of god that would be a word that we describe human moods with it is a figure of speech and i'm using it of god because it's the only way we can grasp god many people get upset when i say we will never see god but the only God we will ever need to see is Jesus Christ. People are freaking out on my video that I made back at the Crack of Dawn report about the Trinity. Was it one of the last ones I made? Yeah, one of the last Crack of Dawn reports I made. People are freaking out because Jesus Christ, it takes the titles of the deity. And they're saying that it proves that he is the deity that he is god no it proves that god needed company god needed an image you say martin how can you say god needs anything well he chooses to need things he doesn't absolutely need anything but he chooses to need things so he 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 spews the it's a bad word he lets he no it's another bad word he he exudes yes he exudes the entire creation from his being it was a giant birth this was before there was a universe this was before there was on earth this was before there was one human being it was god alone and i can't even say in the universe because i just told you there was no universe so of necessity god creates an image and that image is jesus christ and yes jesus christ was a created being and he was the first being created and no his origin was not out of mary's little womb in bethlehem that was not the beginning of jesus christ because colossians chapter 1 clearly tells us all things were created in him and through him they weren't created in a concept or through a concept christ was not a concept he's the origin of the creation of god revelation 3 14 and so jesus christ is worthy because he's the image he can take all the titles of god you want to call me elohim go ahead call me elohim because i'm the perfect representative of elohim you want to call me el shaddai then do it i'm worthy of it you want to call me the alpha and the omega whatever title would you like to call me l would you like to call me uh whatever title god takes jesus christ is worthy to take it because jesus christ was god's first fellowship his first form of fellowship and it is my thinking 
Am I going to be adamant on this? No. That Jesus Christ was always a man. We don't get excited. I'm not saying he was an Adamic man. But he was the man, Christ Jesus. And Paul calls him a man. He calls himself a man. And he wasn't, I'm saying he wasn't just a man when he came from his mommy's belly. I'm saying that he was the prototype of humanity. Otherwise, Adam is the first human. Adam is the first thing ever. That, in other words, Christ follows suit. What I'm trying to say is, if Adam was the first man ever, then Christ is imitating Adam. But I say Adam is imitating Christ. I'm not saying Christ had two arms and two legs. I'm just saying that I believe he was a man. And that Adam, it's not like God created Adam and God said, that's a good idea. Let's bring another one. It was Jesus Christ is the beginning, the origin of everything except for God because he came out of God. And we are now living in the continuance of the expulsion of all these things God wants and needs in order to have and find fellowship. What does God want? What does God need? Well, the first thing he wants is Christ. Then he wants a bunch of spiritual beings in his home. His uh, creation is proximal. He creates it near him first. So Christ is his near and dear one. And so he has someone now to, to confide in. And as, as a human being, you need somebody like this in your life. Someone to confide in. If it's not a husband or a wife, then it's a brother or a sister or a mother. We need confidants. And the wise man said we need counselors. And so we find these in our friends, in our family, in our, our husbands or wives. God found it in Christ. And together, God and Christ then did everything else. Christ then acted on behalf of God from that time forward. It was the last lonely thing God did. Why do you think that it's, he says in the Garden of Eden, it's not good for a man to be alone? That's a reflection of him. It was not good for him to be alone. And so he expels Christ from his being. Jesus Christ himself said, I came out of God. But why did God do this? Because God was lonely. Who wants to be the only being in the universe? That would be horrible, horrible. And so Christ creates God says, okay, it's, it's, I'm going to now do everything through you. Finally, I'm going to do everything through you. It pleases me to do everything through you. I'm going to create everything else through you. So Jesus Christ, Hebrews 1, 3, then creates the eons. I believe the eons, the framework of time, were created. The eons were created before there was a universe. Because I insist to you that a universe must exist in the realm of time. So there must be time. And so time was created by Jesus Christ. I think that's Hebrews uh, 11, 3, is it? I should probably slow down here anyway. Uh, it's, either, it's either at the beginning of Hebrews, or Hebrews takes a big, uh, a big leap in chapter 11. Oh, it's in the beginning. Chapter 1. By many portions and many modes of old, God speaking to the fathers and the prophets in the last of these days speaks to us in a son whom he appoints enjoyer of the allotment of all. This is huge truth to be telling these Hebrews. I'm going to get into this. Uh, through whom he also makes the eons. There it is. Verse 2. Now verse 3. Who being the effulgence of his glory, the emblem of his assumption, the the effulgence of his glory. God had all this glory. But you can't see it or hear it. And God doesn't have anybody to appreciate it until it effulges. Until he creates someone. He creates, as if, if you can uh, indulge me this analogy, the sun has a corona. When I was a kid, I loved to play the drums. And I had a drum set. It was pink. My mom and dad got me a drum set, a pink drum set. And... Uh, it, you can only play by yourself so long and you can only play with yourself for so long and then you need you need an audience i do i don't know if you do but you need someone to appreciate what you do don't you be honest with yourself don't leave me hanging here right someone has to appreciate you whether it's your boss or your children you need that you need to be enjoyed you need to know that your life 
has meaning. Your existence is needed and necessary. Well, I'm telling you, in a sense, God was like this too. He wants to be loved because it's fun. It's enjoyable to be loved. So God wants to be loved. So he creates Christ so Christ can love him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? Babies pop out of the womb and they need, they want love. They're covered with mucus. They need hosed off. They need uh, towel dried and they need to nurse and they need touched. And so this is the human experience. The human experience is a reflection of the divine experience. And it started with the son of God. What is so hard about this? These lunatics of the Catholic Church, then the Nicaea Council back in the year 300, um, invented this crazy thing called the Trinity, where they think Jesus Christ existed eternally, which is r ridiculous. Or they think Jesus Christ is God, which is even more ridiculous. He's the Father. He's his own Father. But God gives us a family to help us understand. And he gives us this need to be loved and to love to help us understand him and Jesus Christ. And the two of these, the two of these, God and Christ, I always like to say the two of them. I always like to say that because it agitates people. Um, whenever somebody says, I thank God, I said, don't forget to thank Jesus Christ. Don't forget to thank God and Christ. I always say God and Jesus Christ because it irritates people because they think God and Jesus Christ are the same person. So it irritates them. Uh, don't forget Christ. Well, you're, you're covering it all when you say God. Well, not really. Unless Jesus Christ is acting as his representative at that particular time, then he's worthy to take the title. As I told you, I love it. God loves it too. God can sit back, put his hands behind his head and say, yeah, talk to him. Talk to my man, Christ Jesus, my son. And now through Christ, everybody else comes into existence. You see, first the time frame, the scaffolding on which God will hang his masterpiece. Then comes creation. Then comes the near celestial beings. These are all the celestial beings coming into existence. Millions of them, and they're all praising God. It's kind of like the wave, only it's a celestial wave, and there's a bunch of noise finally in heaven. This is why I like the house I'm staying at in Fort Lauderdale, because there's People coming in and out from different nationalities all the time. And there's activities like, ow, ow. It's kind of like the wave. And I need that, you see, because I'm done raising kids. It was the best time of my life raising my sons, being in a home, having that activity. And you young parents out there who says, oh, these kids are driving me nuts. I can't wait to be done with it. Don't say that. Are you out of your minds? Those are the best times of your life. I want you to go to YouTube, look up David Bowie, and find his song, Golden Years. Golden Years, because you are in your golden years, you young parents, and don't forget it, and don't take it for granted, or you're missing out. So what golden years these were for God, Christ, the universe, all coming into existence. And they're, they're humming up there. And of course, then there was some tumult. There was an incident. It was the disruption of the world. And it happened so that we could begin now. God is creating a field so that other beings can enjoy, enjoy, enjoy forever. And again, it comes back to the contrast principle. You can't enjoy something unless you have an incident and things are disrupted and there is sin jangling about in the universe and so this sets the stage now doesn't it for the creation of a species like unto christ like unto christ on a new thing that didn't exist in the universe before and it's called the planet earth